Hello everyone, you read the title of the video so let's get right into the guide. The most basic X mode combo consists of a sideways slash, rising slash and overhead slash, which you won't use a lot if at all. You will see every single chain I am talking about in the top left corner of the screen for Xbox controller and mouse and keyboard. Sorry PlayStation. You can cut the sideways slash out of this chain by pressing Y or left mouse button and Y plus B or left mouse button plus right mouse button. For a rising slash and chain these in Infinitely together, which is really helpful for flying monsters and cutting tails. X mode in general has a better range, and when fighting flying monsters, you are usually better off by focusing on X mode until you slap them out of the sky. Spamming B or right mouse button will lead into the wild swing, a stamina draining continuous attack. Each hit deals more damage, reaching the maximum damage after three swings. It is constant and decent damage, but there are better options for DPS, which we will talk about later. After three swings, you'll see this aura pop up indicating you can perform the heavy slam by pressing Y or left mouse button. This attack looks sick, feels great and deals lovely damage, yet it doesn't stop there. With the heavy slam you power up your X, increasing the chance of staggering a monster and increasing part break damage. This power X mode lasts for 45 seconds, however it can be extended with the power prolonger skill to up to 90 seconds. When you have slinger ammo you can also retreat from wild swing, but I will talk about movement in another part of the video. Let's Let's focus on the base attacks first. From wild swing you can also press RT or control to do a long and dedicated morphing attack. And this, this hit right here is the single most damaging hit in all of Switch X moveset, which basically means you'd want to wake up a monster with this exact hit within this morphing attack for maximum damage. But it is pretty tricky to pull off so you can just use an overhead slash or just launch the monster into a wall. And now after this morphing attack you are in sword mode. Now keep this very, very important note in mind by pressing RT or control at any time you will morph between sword and X mode. This works obviously while standing still, however you should never do that rather than performing it mid combo. After any attack you can morph between both modes. Understanding and using this is key to playing Switch X as effectively as possible and playing super fluent without many downtimes. Another interesting note, you can perform the slinger burst shots mid combo only in X mode. Sword mode does not have access to it. And now onto sword mode, which is the main source of all your DPS. And this is where the fun begins. A quick note about a special property of sword mode is that you cannot bounce off the monster. No matter how tough its skin is or how low your sharpness is, so you can always keep your chain going and walk won't be caught off guard. Here you have a standard looping triple Y or a light mouse button chain which results in an overhead slash, a left and right rising slash. Your B or right mouse button chain looks like this. A double sideways slash leading into heavenward flurry, a pretty long and dedicated attack so watch out when to use it, but you will use it a lot. You can chain this combo into itself and in between this combo you need to perform a rising slash with Y or left mouse button to get back into the double sideways slash. But beware you cannot just use the sword mode however and how much you want. The sword mode is powered by the switch gauge. Morphing into and attacking in sword mode depletes this gauge and once you you are underneath this threshold, you cannot morph into sword mode again. And once the gauge is completely empty, you are forced out of sword mode with a long, uninterruptible animation, leaving you very vulnerable. Great. You just discovered sword mode and it's awesome attacks and now it's empty. What to do? Well, the gauge refills automatically over time but it takes seemingly forever. You can manually reload a big chunk of the gauge as long as it is underneath the morphing threshold. But this is also not really optimal and should never be done mid-fight of course. To better sustain the sword mode you need to switch back to X mode every now and then because performing a morphing slash back to X mode will reload a small amount of your switch gauge. You can also chain the morphing slashes into each other, which is far from optimal, yet it can build switch gauge and yeah, as you can see you can use the morph attack literally anytime. But I'm not done yet. How about another gauge you have to keep track of? While attacking and hitting a monster in sword mode, the amped meter around your weapon info starts to fill up and once it is maxed out, this is where the real fun begins. You enter amped state with sword mode, adding additional discharges to every single hit. This obviously boosts your damage output 
put even more in sword mode and makes maintaining sword mode even more important. Okay, so there's one more basic attack we need to talk about and then we talk about useful chains and when to use what attack as well as movement with switch X. We are still missing the elemental discharge. Now this is where the real, real fun begins. While in sword mode, pressing Y and B, or left mouse button and right mouse button, will thrust your sword forward and spamming Y or left mouse button will continue to build the weapon's discharge, leading into a, a, a discharge. If you are in amped state, you will attach to a monster if you hit the initial thrust and do exactly that attached to the monster, leading to the zero sum discharge. Maybe the most iconic move of Switch X. Alternatively, you can press RT or or control mid charge to do a clutch claw shot and attach to the monster which is ridiculously satisfying and does a surprising amount of damage and gives a huge boost to your amp meter. This is an absolute master's way of getting to amp state and going for an instant ZSD. I rarely see people doing it but it is seriously amazing. So, very quickly, summing up what you should have learned in this section next to the basic weapon combos. You can only attack in sword mode, the big damage mode, while you have this gauge filled, so maintaining it is key. Simultaneously, you want to build the amp meter in sword mode to get into amped state for extra damage and access to the zero sum discharge. Morphing between modes and using the advantages of both modes will help you to successfully hunt any monster. The advantages of X mode are higher mobility, higher reach, but less damage. Sword mode has the juicy DPS, but lacks mobility and has a little less reach. Now let's get into important and useful chains that you should learn to use as soon as possible. Let's talk about your DPS chain, which you should only really use when the monster is downed or paralyzed or whatever, because you can't easily cancel out of it. You start the wild swing and immediately do your morph attack, which, as you remember, has the attack with the highest hit zone value in it, and then you move backwards and perform another morph attack to get back to your starting position to repeat the process. Take your time and practice it, but yeah, this will be your best option for maximum damage. To get into end state as quickly as possible, you will need to focus on your B or right mouse button chain in sword mode. The double sideways slash gives a good amount of end meter, however, especially the heavenward flurry really boosts your end meter. Spamming zero sum discharge can be really fun with temporal mantle and rocksteady mantle, but you can otherwise get knocked off a monster if that monster uses the body part you're attached to in an attack. So if you don't have your mantles ready, be careful please. And while you are in amp state, you can clutch claw onto a monster and start the zero sum discharge instead of the softening attack. So as you can see, you can seriously spam the zero sum discharge. When you are in amp state, you finally get access to the absolute highest DPS chain possible for Switch X, which consists of overhead slash, left and right rising slash, into double sideways slash and repeat. This is even higher than the DPS chain I showed you earlier, but the other one is more for a X mode focused playstyle or when you are not in amp state and don't feel like working towards this. Even though genuinely speaking, this should be your main target. But again, freedom of playstyle choice, so just keep these two chains in mind. But you should only focus on this particular chain once you are in amped state. But please, have fun with this weapon and don't focus everything about the optimal DPS in every single hunt. Alright, so we talked a lot about attacking, now let's talk about movement and evasion. I see a lot of people complaining about the defense of Switch X, since it doesn't have a counter, at least in world. It can't block or has an uninterruptible bash. And it doesn't need to. I mean, it would be nice to see the counter again or any form of defense, but let's just pretend we don't need it. Despite its somewhat long attack animations, Switch X is more mobile than you might think. First thing I recommend doing while engaging or evading large attacks, dodge roll into a morph attack to cover extra distance. It'll save your life countless times and get you into the range of the monster. Especially when using sword mode in which you can only walk and your dodge roll is really bad for your spine. Morphing back 
to the Waymo Mobile X mode becomes essential. In X mode you don't have to walk and your dodge rolls are more flexible while recovering. Within chains you have sideway and forward hops and a backwards roll in X mode. In sword mode you can only hop out of a chain. But you do have the backwards fading slash which I mentioned in the DPS combo. And to get out of wild swing quickly you will need some slinger ammo. Performing a slinger burst within the wild swing will let you retreat and even chain into an evading slash and dodge roll backwards covering a lot of ground. Mobility really isn't an issue of switch X. You simply have to learn how to use it. With evade window 3 I can sidestep a lot of attacks and instantly start attacking again. If you have any particular monster or attacks you just can get out of feel free to let me know in the comments and maybe I can offer a solution other than good good. But now there's one last thing you need to know about the weapon itself. Every switch X comes with a file type which are actually visible on every single switch X. Power file, elemental file, dragon, exhaust, poison and paralysis. Depending on the file type it will take more or less attacks to fill the amp meter. Power files take the longest while exhaust for example is amped within one basic chain. The file type also determines what type of damage is added in amp state and the elemental discharges. I think they are pretty self explanatory so let me just say that the exhaust file also has a stun effect so you can stun monsters like hammer and hunting horn do. Otherwise it's pretty simple, power files add more raw damage, elemental files more elemental damage Damage, you get the idea. Now let's talk about what skills I'd recommend specifically for Switch X. As I've mentioned in the beginning, Power Prolonger can double the time you are in end state and your Power X mode. That is plenty of DPS in sword mode if you're not 45 seconds in end state but 90. Evade Extender is an option. I personally much prefer Evade Window though. You can start with Evade Window level 5 and once you get comfortable with the timing you can reduce it to level 3 for example. Focus lets you get faster into end state but three slots for a not really noticeable amp meter buildup is not worth it. At least in my opinion, yet I hope you do experiment with it and find skills that suit your playstyle. Making elemental builds with Switch X is really rewarding despite the raw damage meta because Switch X can deal a lot of elemental damage with its end state and the correct file type. Though elemental boosting skills are welcome, other than that you of course have all your standard damage enhancing skills that I don't need to go into. Oh yeah, so when you are trying to make an elemental build, don't get a Switch X with an element but a power file because you will do more raw damage but if you are focusing on an elemental build you ultimately want the maximum amount of elemental damage. So please choose an elemental switch X that has an elemental file. So this guide was basically to show you everything you need to know, but this wasn't everything there is to know about Switch X. I will be uploading more Switch X focused videos in the near future, where I talk even more about some more specialties of the weapon, different playstyles and whatnot. And if you actually watched this video up to here, I'm gonna reward you with one final tip for zero sum discharge. Don't spam the zero sum discharge until you automatically finish with the biggest explosion because it looks super cool and this huge recovery animation is just but it wastes a lot of time. If you can time it you can just stop spamming the discharge and you release early with a little bit smaller explosion but you just drop down and you can immediately chain into a morph slash or hop out of the way and start the next zero sum discharge. So obviously once again play however you like but ideally you want to finish the discharge a little bit earlier to get back into action even quicker. I really hope you enjoyed this guide and learned something. Be sure to leave any questions in the comments and happy hunting.